guys, Julia here. Just letting you know, it is very hot in New Jersey today, so my hair is up in a bun, so there you go. We're doing a little bit of a more casual video today, and I think that is fitting because today I am bringing you another story behind the stories. Now, my first two story behind the stories have been in association with the scavenger, but I did not just make mistakes with the scavenger. I'd like to think the release for Missing Her went perfectly, but it did not. And uh, yeah, we're gonna talk about something that happened when I was writing and getting ready to publish Missing Her. I did not lie in the title, it's not clickbait or anything like that, but I'm just gonna jump into it. So when I wrote Missing Her and the Scavenger, I was still a high school student and I did a lot of my work on Google Drive. If you're not familiar with Google Drive, basically it's an online platform that allows you to put a bunch of documents, a bunch of videos, and organize it in folders and share it with whomever you want. It's super useful for me when I'm doing beta reading or when I'm sending things and I can control who has access to it, who can view it, that sort of thing. That came back to haunt me with Missing Her and you'll see why in just a second. So whenever I do beta rounds for any of my books, I like to give people the option of either doing it online or doing it in person with hard copies. Now, due to the pandemic, most of the beta reads for Awaited Soul were done via the interwebs. But because while I was publishing The Scavenger and Missing Her, we were not in the middle of a pandemic, I was actually able to print out copies for those. So that's what I did for Missing Her. Now, I did my normal shtick. Uh, once it got too thick of a manuscript for me to print in my house, uh, I started to print at Staples. So I went to Staples like I normally do. They got to know me pretty well. I came in with my flash drive and for some reason they were doing something different and instead of doing it on a flash drive like they normally did they were trying to test a new system where they were sending it via email and then they would get it via the email and print it not a problem that's totally fine a little weird but whatever so i'm preparing to send over the email and uh they have it there and it's like staff at staples staff staples at something or i don't even know or staff at staples.com i don't know but I'm preparing to print it out. And as I'm typing in staff, I saw an email pop up. And I don't know why I didn't notice what exactly the email was, but I assumed that because I had printed at Staples before, um, it was just kind of auto-correcting it to the staff. And it looked really close to the staff at staples.com, whatever. So I clicked on it and I sent it over, good to go. Uh, I waited a couple minutes and they said that they didn't get it and I was like, okay, that's weird So I sent it over again and it seemed to be fine. Whatever. I print the uh, I print it out I'm standing there waiting to pay and everything and I get a notification through my email And it says that someone is requesting to view the document missing her and I was like Okay, that's kind of weird. Not sure why that's happening, but whatever. A couple minutes later, I got another notification. Someone requesting to be, mi be missing her. I was really confused because I haven't even really released missing her yet, so I had no idea how they was doing this. And after my fourth or fifth email of this, I started to panic. And I was like, where are people getting this link from? Why are people requesting to view this? What is happening? I thought my email was hacked. I look back over the emails that I sent, and I realized that I accidentally, I don't know how this happened, but the email that automatically popped up for the one that I thought was Staples staff was actually the chain staff email for my entire high school. Now, just to give you an idea, my high school was huge. I graduated with almost a class of a thousand. It was ginormous. So this staff email went out to hundreds of people and I was shook, okay? This was like the worst nightmare. Now here's here's the good thing. The document was like, I didn't, I just shared it with them, but for some reason they didn't get view access. So the emails that were coming in, they weren't requesting to edit or anything, they were just requesting to view it. And once I realized that, I was like, oh no. So the first thing I did was I deleted that missing her document and I, I had another one made. So I just made sure to, to copy everything and put it in another document. And then I sent out an email to the staff chain and I was like, I am so sorry, I did not mean to send you that. 
Feel free to check out Missing Her when it's in bookstores, but you are not supposed to get that. I did have a few um, teachers come up to me and be like, hey, what was that? But most of them get so many emails that they likely missed it or forgot about it, which was lovely of them. Um, it Honestly, I forgot about this story because I was just so, like it was one of those moments that was so embarrassing that you just kind of block it from your memory um, until I thought about it the other day and I was like, you know what? That's a great story behind the stories video because oh my gosh, I sent an unfinished manuscript to the entire staff of my high school. A great times, you know? I'm really enjoying these story behind the stories videos and I'm glad that you guys are too. It's a really great opportunity for me to tell some of the not great and fun sides of being a writer slash author. The stories themselves are fun to tell in retrospect, but at the moment, yeah, not so great. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me know uh, in the comments what you thought about it. Um, if anything like this has happened to you, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you for stopping by. Bye.